Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So, as always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita, as you know, is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. So, Anvita, today I have a fascinating question for you. It's a question actually that I have been fascinated by, and I've been waiting to discuss this with you because I really want to know more. So, it's from a young lady who is in a relationship and the, she and her partner are living together. And she says that it's a really good relationship. It's a good um, partnership between them. Everything else is fine. She says that her partner really, really likes to do the foreplay thing. So he can spend four to five hours kissing her, kissing her everywhere, really pleasuring her, which is fantastic. But... And here comes the the big problem. She says that at the end of those four or five hours, which I think most women listening to that would be so, so jealous because it's like amazing. But she says that at the end of those four or five hours, he doesn't want sex. So he wants it to stop just with that. And she said if she, she lets him, he would probably carry on even further. But after four or five hours, when she wants sex, he doesn't want sex. And that if she ever gets really, really aroused and wants to do the same thing to him, he won't allow her to kiss him or pleasure him in the same way. I am really intrigued by this particular question. And um, it is an interesting question because I think it is, you know, something that we've spoken about all the time, this idea that, when we go for a dinner, I had so, said to you that in one of the books, an author had described it as saying that, you know, when somebody goes that love making is starter to dessert and dessert is the penetration and we don't go for it. And, you know, this is an example of someone saying they're not interested in dessert at all. And somewhere we have made sex synonymous to penetration in some way. Um, so there are lots of things that I'm thinking about. So let's discuss them slowly as a response to this answer. First is that it's okay to have a choice where you don't like penetration. And there's some people who don't like it. So we can just leave it as he's someone who doesn't like it. But more importantly, what I would like, say if they were a couple that came into my therapy room, what I would really... Psycho, what psychoeducation I would give to them is that a sexual experience is not just physical. It's not only about sex. It's not biological. It's not physical. There is an emotional angle to it as well as um, a psychological piece to it. So it's emotional, psychological. The relationship is involved. And so one of the first hypotheses that I would start with is, is there a sexual problem that he is dealing with because you know there might be so much worry or anxiety that if he penetrates then that there might be an erectile problem or there might be rapid ejaculation or that it might hurt him or that he might not be able to perform so there might be performance anxiety that he might not be able to orgasm or help the woman orgasm when he penetrates like men have as many worries in some ways so I would really explore if there are any fears or worries that this man is carrying with him in some ways like that would be my first point of exploration you know um it's interesting because i think um, it sounds so logical and sounds such a simple thing to say that yes um you know that they should actually discuss this and come up with um what is stopping him because there's obviously something stopping him but i realized often the person who is feeling something so in this case the male uh, the man uh, in the relationship he is feeling it, he doesn't want to do it, but maybe he can't actually articulate the answer. Maybe he can't actually say it because 
so often it's fairly deep buried in us in our psyche we can't actually say it out loud so well, what sounds really simple is well two things firstly he might not know it himself you know mm-hmm. once i had a case and there was a newly married couple and uh, they just avoided sex and it turned out you know what we were treating for uh, erectile problem or something or lack of uh, libido it turned out was that the man had had a horrible first experience he had been unable to perform the first time he had tried sex and since then he was never able to perform sex and it was really tied to his masculinity and you know what does it mean to be a man and not being able to perform and it was very complex but what i'm trying to say is that sometimes men might not realize that what a bad experience can do you know so it might be something that happened in his you know first sexual experience in his childhood sometimes it is something that they have visually seen and they don't want to do it again um you know it in a bizarre sort of way i have heard stories and this is not from my experience but sometimes children see adults performing sex and they visually see it as like a horrific thing you know when a massive penis is penetrating and that visual stays with them and somewhere deep down it feels very scary to them to perform that so there could be so many reasons what i'm saying is that there could be i could come up with stories after stories of what might be might have happened but we don't know what happened in this case so firstly that the man might not know that that is something that is in his past but two he might be aware but it is way easier to avoid penetration and sex to actually admit that he has a problem to actually admit to somebody so that's where the trust in the relationship comes up because it's really scary to admit to somebody that they might have a sexual problem or they might so it's easier for them to make the partner believe they don't like it than to actually admit that oh actually i have a problem because then the fears of will the partner leave me because i have a sexual problem this way at least it's like oh i don't like it and at some day you know the they believe that the partner might have hope that some day they might change their mind but if you are staying with the belief that you actually can't do it then it's a really scary thing for them to share and that's why the trust and intimacy where you know they understand and they realize that you know the partner would stay like the partner is not there for the penetration the partner is there because of them and their relationship i guess also if they were to say it if somebody was to articulate it um there's also a way of then slowly working through the problem or working past it but this whole idea of silence and um yeah i guess it's 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 a real problem so i was just thinking i mean this young lady had written quite a detailed email and um I smiled at one point because she said don't get me wrong you know I'm like any other woman I love the long foreplay and then she went on to say that he has a particularly wide tongue and that did bring a smile to my face that it's a particularly wide and powerful tongue so you know there's um, there's a lot happening with it but it just goes to show I mean I can been point from all the messages we get how many women would say to us this would be ideal this would be perfect this is all we want but uh, you know there is always um, you know uh, there's always a problem there that we haven't quite envisaged and we don't or, or else i don't know i mean i was just thinking in terms of also if somebody does bring you to arousal we've always said women take that much longer and somebody spent 4 or 5 hours arousing you you truly are at that point when you want something and then it feels even more frustrating because you're not getting it so what is the way forward what do you do well so my, my thought was going to be that one does she really want penetration you know once again this is an assumption that we make that penetration is equal to sex 
So the question is, and I'm not saying women don't want penetration. What I'm saying is, is it something that one has imagined that that's what sex should look like? Or is that genuinely something she wants? Like she's enjoying four or five hours of foreplay and she's really liking it. So is it because somebody said penetration is sex that she's wanting it? Or is she really want it? Would, would an oral sex be sufficient? So I think um, from from her email, definitely. I mean, she said that she has mentioned that he won't do this, which leads me to believe that it's something she's asked for and it hasn't come. And I also know from past experience of talking to people and just, you know, knowing the female of the species, you know, talking to other women. Um, I know that when you get to that point of arousal, which you would after, you know, five hours of foreplay, I think, you know, most women would be in a good place. I think this is something that a lot of people would want to move towards. It's it's a very automatic sort of desire. A lot of the times, maybe not every time, but a lot of the time. So is there some but, way So there it? is. All I'm saying is that we know most women do not orgasm with penetrative sex and oral sex sometimes gives a more surety of orgasming and so do you want the penetration? Don't you want a penetration? Is that something you're saying because that's how you see sex or genuinely that's your need? That's all that I'm establishing. If it is genuinely your need, let's go with that assumption. And your partner is not interested in it. Um, I think that's where you go and seek help and try having a conversation because how we would you know, see it is, is that is there something wrong sexually with the partner in the sense, like, is there a problem? So is there a sexual problem? Is there erectile difference, difficulties or whatever? Is there a psychological problem? Like I gave examples of like, he is, um, you know, ha has had bad experiences before. And, you know, it could be something about, I was just thinking about the kissing. It could be as small as, he kissed a girl when he was 16 and she turned around and said, your mouth smells. And since then, he has felt like, oh, my God, my mouth smells. So I can't kiss anybody ever again. It's interesting you should bring that up because actually one of the points in the in the message is that he, he won't kiss her on the mouth. He kisses her all over the rest of her body, but not on the mouth. So exactly. So, you know, it could be something that has happened. So we would explore if it is psychological or emotional. Three, we would explore, is there something in the relationship, right? Like, is there something he's holding back? Is he not giving it what is happening? You know, so we would explore the relationships issues in some ways, like what is happening in the relationship. And finally, say everything is prim and proper, check on emotions, check on psychological, sex on physiology, check on everything. Then we would come to the point of there are two partners who like having sex differently. And how are we going to work with it, right? So one partner wants penetration and one partner doesn't like penetration. So how are we going to work with this? And that is something that we would work with the couple saying, you have different likes and dislikes sexually, how are you going to compromise and how are you going to make this work in a relationship? My God, it's all so um, complex when you think about it, you know, like, yeah, it, you know, in the Kama Sutra, when Vatsyayan says that people have different sizes of sexual organs and for really good sex, for really pleasurable sex, it is important to synchronize the sizes and which is why he then creates these positions because he says with different types of positions you can actually adjust the sizes to fit each other properly because that's the first thing and this is just I mean it's like 10 steps deeper into that same point um, he doesn't deal with psychological issues and he doesn't deal with emotional issues otherwise I would have loved to hear what Vatsyayana and the Kama Sutra would have written about saying, well, if two people like to have sex differently, how do they bring it together? And I actually was thinking when you spoke about sizes, I remember somebody had written to you and said that they are very big and they feel they will hurt their partner. And that's why they don't want to penetrate. And 
you know, we don't need to always see it as a point of like arrogance or something. It might be a genuine fear of a man that, you know, a partner in the past might have said, oh, you've hurt me, or they might have bled or something might have happened. And they might be holding on to that fear uh, that, you know, they genuinely will hurt a partner if they penetrate. Um, so you're right, like, how do you overcome these differences? Um, and thinking about the relationship, you were saying, when I was saying about holding back, you were saying it could be a form of control as well, right? I think that that is one option. I mean, it is, it's nice to think that maybe it's a more sensitive person. I mean, it's a problem either way. So it is something that needs to be dealt with. Um, but uh, it's nice to think that it could be from a more sensitive standpoint or maybe a psychological standpoint. But yeah, it could also be this thing about control that I will do, you will merely be the one that receives. And that's not so unheard of either, except that this whole thing about um, the penetration, which to me is slightly unusual, I think when it comes to men, because I think most guys do like the idea of penetration. I'm not saying all guys, but certainly most men. And it's women who are more kind of um, uncertain about it because most women, as you said, don't necessarily come to orgasm during penetration. But it, I think that it's unusual for men to not want it. So, um, and obviously in this case, again, you know, like I said, I, I didn't read out the whole email to you and I'm bringing it out in little bits, but right at the end, she also says that he's never come in her presence. Mm. So, so, you know, yeah, so, you know, as in, there could be issues of control. Uh, once again, then that would be relationship to understand what is happening. And the idea is of what are you holding back and what are you giving, right? And why are you holding it back? And that's what we explore. What I did think about from what um, you were saying, and we spoke about this, one of the things to always explore is the myths around the vagina. A lot of women hold the myth that vagina is a dirty place. It's a very interesting concept. Like men, I have rarely heard men talk about their penis as a dirty place or, you know, people should not go, not go down on them. And it's like where we urinate from and everything. But a lot of women have this hesitancy of, oh, I can go down on a man, but a man can't go down on me because it's, it's not clean. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's dirty. And they stop their partner on going down on them. But at the same time, there are people who have big issues OCDs or psychological problems, obsessive compulsive disorders around fluids. And because they have issues around fluids, they don't like the texture of the vagina. They feel there's going to be exchange of fluids and that freaks them out. And then they don't like going into the vagina actually, because they like the ideas of, of hygiene and OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders and they have a big issue around fluids and hygiene and everything and they don't like to enter vaginas so you know there's so many possibilities in some ways of how come he doesn't want to penetrate but it's something he needs to reflect on and he needs to find the courage to share uh, if she's finding it so frustrating like he needs to find somewhere the trust and courage to actually share with her what's going on so, you know, when you said earlier about here are two people who like to have sex in different ways, it's if you if you bring it down to brass tacks, I mean, the most basic thing that is what it is. And we did a couple of things earlier on BDSM where one partner really wanted it and the other one didn't. And we talked about if, you know, you have two people with two diametrically opposite ideas to the same act, how are they going to find that common ground and how are they going to come together? Do you have any suggestions in this case for these two? Yeah, so I think it is like I'm saying, it's exploring and talking and one partner saying, 
okay, I'm willing to do this much. Or, you know, there's a lovely exercise that we do sometimes in therapy rooms is that where every partner gets a sexual wish on one day. Like Monday is the wives, the Tuesday is the husband's, Wednesday is the wives and everything. And what we normally say is that it has to be a very, it's not as big as, oh, I want to do BDSM or I want to have, you know, a certain kind of sex or whatever. It's more like, I, I'm, you know, I want to hold hands today or I want to kiss today or I want to foreplay today. It's like, it's much as a, a smaller ask. Uh, but the deal basically is that you can refuse and say one thing less. Like if somebody says, I want to kiss, you can say, I won't kiss, but I will hug. But you always have to give something on that day. So you can request. So one option is to try doing that, like, you know, to request. And the partner can always maybe say, I won't penetrate, but maybe I'll allow you to have oral sex with me right and you build up like that in some ways uh, depending on what the psychological issue is if it, that can be resolved in some ways I know some people who have hygiene issues around the vagina tend to have anal sex because they feel more comfortable with that than the vagina I'm not saying I think it's a it, it, I think if it's an informed choice, it's different, but it's like, oh, I have an issue, so I'm going to go to anal sex. I find it a little bit problematic because I feel like you need to have resolved your issue and made it as a choice rather than just a, you know, copping out strategy, basically. Uh, but I would just, you know, I, I think it's important to explore what your sexual desires are. And definitely as in this woman has asked him for penetrative sex and he has said that he doesn't like it, uh, but it's okay for her to push a little bit more to say, why not, you know, and that's my desire. So what, and then she needs to compromise, like say they might have penetrative sex one day, but they might not have it the next day. So finding, you know, ways for both in some ways is the ideal thing. I think I like that exercise. And I think that that's something that's really useful from the way that um, I'm sort of visualizing how maybe they could use it. So I think that, yeah, that definitely should be something that they can actually negotiate on. So if it's like one day, one person gets to make the choice and the other day, the next person, you know, um, keeping in mind, like you said, that nobody goes too over the top. So you don't kind of go, to extremes and say, okay, I want to swing from the ceiling fan and do this with you. It's like something small because we all have to remember that when we're trying to overcome a problem, it has to be with baby steps. You can't sort of go wild and say, you know, brush yeah, away everything. And I really want to emphasize the point because the exercise is used more to build intimacy, you know, for people who are not having sex. And it's to build baby steps of like holding hands or hugging or kissing. It's not, it's not a replacement of like we were saying that somebody has kinks and they want to impose them or, you know, have like, you know, that they have different sexual uh, fantasies and they have to impose it. So do what feels comfortable just because, and like I said, you can always refuse. You just have to offer something back in return, which can be less than. Um, and that could be giving a hug or giving something, you know, and it has to be less than, but it is like, it can't be in extremes. It has to be baby steps on the way. If you can get help, that is better. Uh, and then they will guide you through such exercises and such ways of communication. Uh, and that might be more helpful in some ways than trying to do it on your own. So I think in closing, what we are saying is that it could well be that he is um, refusing to have uh, penetrative, penetrative sex or refusing to kiss her on the mouth or refusing to let her do anything to him because maybe it is a trauma from past times that he's carrying forward. Maybe it's something that he cannot articulate. Maybe it is and he's choosing not to. But 
the first step would be that it would be good if they could actually sit down and try and have a heart to heart. If not with each other, then maybe with some help. But I do know that a lot of people, when it comes to something like this, they feel it's far too personal and they don't really want to go and discuss it with somebody else. As you know, so many of the questions that come to us, they would say, don't mention my name. You know, it's just that that fear of other people knowing what's happening with you. But if everything else is not really working and this is a nice, gentle, non-intimidating sort of role play that you can do where every day on alternate days you get different you know each partner gets to pick something that they would like to do something small a baby step um i think that that might really work well towards at least some part of solving this particular um problem and i can almost hear our female audiences the women in our audiences saying oh my god what wouldn't i give to have this and I guess what I want to say is that, yes, it does sound amazing because, well, five hours of foreplay is most women's dream, not everybody's, certainly most women's dream. But I guess things aren't always as amazing as they sound because somebody always wants something else. Yeah. And the only thing I would say is that even if you're trying the exercise or trying other things, if it is a genuine fear or say it's coming from a trauma and if we flip sides, you know, and if it was a woman who had vaginismus and wasn't able to have penetrative sex or anything, we would never say, or oh, push your way through or, you know, do this exercise. And if one day, she, you know, he asks for penetrative sex, then you have to give it to him. If it is a genuine fear, if it's a genuine anxiety, then we will make situations worse by asking for it, because we are basically triggering the fear or anxiety. Uh, the way to relieve anxiety and pressure is to take that situation out of it. Like I've said that when we have uh, erectile dysfunction, we actually say only for pay, no penetrative sex. So don't introduce things that actually will make the situation worse. Um, so I really do think that the way to start with it is reflection. Uh, and providing a not judgmental space to the partner to actually say if there is. And maybe they will say, if they say, oh, this is just how I like it, then it's okay to say, but I like it differently. So how can we compromise on this? And I think that the main takeaway should be that um, sometimes it can happen that two people like to have sex very, very differently. Most people have different likes anyway, different likes and dislikes. But sometimes it can be extremes where the way that you enjoy sex is very, very different. Like we've said in the case of BDSM and things, which is somehow when you mention something like that, people can understand why things could be so different in a gentler situation like the one that we brought up um, it's difficult to understand how your desires could be so different. So most people probably find that a little bit unusual to think of, but it still all comes under this idea of the act of sex or the act of intimacy in some way or the other. And things can be very different for very different people. So I think it's really, it's it's a, it's been a really interesting question for me just to remind myself, even though we work in the field, to remind myself that how differently people can look at the same thing. And even when it seems so obvious, it never is that, yeah, desires can be very, very different and Absolutely. out of the box. Absolutely. And also, I think we are sold that penetrative sex is the only way of having sex. And I would really, you know, want to question that. I know that's not, because that's just the way how sex is sold to us, to me, men and women. Um, and it would be interesting to, you know, think about it, that is it, is it really the only form of pleasure? And can you actually have a really pleasurable sexual experience without penetration? If it's your choice. Definitely something to think about. And 
I think as we say bye, I'd like to even suggest to people who generally enjoy having sex in the same way or similarish way, maybe just to spice up your sex life, maybe actually try it very differently. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people do write in and say, what can we do to make things exciting? Why not instead come up with a game where on alternate days you come up with something different that you want to try with your partner? Just which fantasies. Is- Yeah. alternate fantasies like you know alternate the different fantasies. fantasies yeah absolutely it is fun and you will spice it up and it will get people thinking about sex which will arouse them even more and sex life will be better there you go well i certainly hope that if you've listened in that you found this very useful because i started this particular session off with a very different idea in my head and um, anvita you've actually made me think very differently about it you've taken me into a whole different space and i really have found this discussion fascinating personally speaking i really have so thank you for that and if all of you out there have enjoyed listening to it do like comment subscribe on the video as you know we're here for you to get in touch with if you want to send in your questions i am on info.seema.anand@gmail.com and if you need to get in touch with anvita about therapy or about consultation she is on anvita.madanbehel@gmail.com and the spellings are down in the text below we hope that you're staying well through this still very difficult time continue to look after yourselves be very safe and we will see you here soon